How about we just turn these tunes down just a little bit so I can explain what's going on here. When we started wiring this house um, a year ago, one of the things I knew I wanted to put in this house was a whole house sound system. I wanted something really intentional put in the house. So I went through and put in, so we are in the kids' bathroom and these big holes are left in the ceiling and those are for speakers to go into. They are a certain size of template that I bought that goes to a certain size of speaker that I bought. What I did purchase, I will link down in the description if you're interested in using them um, because they really work well. And I gotta say, I got this idea from my brother, but I took it one step further. So all the speakers are laid throughout the entire house in the living room areas, up in the kitchen, up in Bonnie and I's bathroom, up in the kitchen so that uh, we have music in the kitchen as well and no speaker on any of the countertops. It's a little sneak peek for you. Another place that I also wanted speakers was outside. So we put speakers on the outside of the house. Now these are waiting for me to wire up, but I couldn't wait to show what we bought to make all these speakers run. So even in Bonnie and I's bathroom, wherever you put one speaker, they really recommend you put two, A and a B. And that is because sound works off each other. Kind of needs to bounce to get that full stereo effect. But come, come, come with me. In this house, we have this mechanical room where we have power for the upstairs of the house coming in. We have all of the data coming into the house, but we also have this. This is all the speaker wire that we pulled and this runs to every one of those big openings in the ceiling. Um, there's hardwired speaker, hardwired. We are hardwired for speakers in all of those spots. But they all come back to this hub. This is a Juke audio hub and what it does is it links all of those speakers together so that now wherever I'm at, I can use the Juke audio app and I can be playing whatever I wanna play. Say it's on Spotify, say it's just on AirPlay or whatever way I just use my phone and through this system, it plays on those speakers throughout the house. So now using the Juke audio app, I select what speakers I wanna use, the garage, the kitchen, the living room, and then these other zones, up to eight zones, um, can be used. Now I haven't labeled these ones or plugged them in yet because I was too excited. So I needed to get one or two in so I could show you how it works. So it's very simple. I have taken all of the speaker wire that we have. It was all labeled kids bathroom and each location has two sets of wires for A and B. And you strip just a little bit and shove it into these entrances. Now each zone has four ports a positive and a negative, and a positive and a negative for left and right speakers. So one, two, three, four through eight. Just a little side note, it does work better if you have ethernet hookup directly to your internet. If you don't, it can use Wi-Fi, but ethernet works the best. Another side note is when it comes to positive and negative, in the speaker world, red is the positive and black is the negative. Same as a battery terminals, keep that in mind. One of the things I really like about the system is that it takes all of this congested mess and we can clean it up obviously better later on, but it puts it in a hidden spot in the house so that you don't have wires or anything anywhere else. It's all clean looking wherever you're working in the house. So now if you wanna be in the kitchen, garage, living room, whatever room has these speakers, you turn on your music and just jam and it gets, um, get you where you want to be, and it can move with you throughout the house. You go from the kitchen to the living room, you just change the speaker. These are the speakers that I went with, the Polk Audio, the RC80i. I went with these because they're good quality, so I'm gonna have good sound, but they're also not too ridiculously priced. These speakers actually mount up to the exact placeholders we put in the ceilings for sheetrock. Here's what your speakers are gonna look like. Come with a flange that covers all of that so it looks nice and clean and flush when you're done. And these little clamps open and clamp down with screws down behind here. Here's one of the tricks that I, uh, reading through the instructions, uh, had to learn. If you do not have a paper clip on hand, you need to find some very thin wire that will fit down in these holes. Oh, this one may be too thick. I had some thin stuff. Oh, no. Paper clip will work and you just slightly tug at the sides of this screen, very, very precariously. And then that screen will pop up. Now we wanna be careful and not bend it or damage it in any way, but this allows us access to the speaker itself, but also it allows us access to the screws 
that make these clamps work. So you'll just put it in place and push on these screws and it says do not over tighten them. So I've got my drill turned down too low so that I can back it off when I need to. Now, another reason I went with these speakers is because they have a, what they call a subwoofer and then they have a tweeter. So you get a little crisper sound out of it, high quality for a good price. On the back of the speaker, there are two little ports, your positive and your negative port. And luckily our wire is color coded as well for red and black. So we just put them in the place that they match. Before I take the speaker up there, I get it prepped and ready, opened up, and then I come up and find my wire that I put in here long times ago. And it is right here. And what is cool about these placeholders is they actually have a little tab that you run your wire through, and that little tab keeps the wire located next to it. And you can tell all it is is just a placeholder for the sheet rockers to cut out. You technically don't have to have them. So if you're gonna feed it in through existing sheetrock and cut your holes, it's doable. It's more than doable. But if you're doing new construction, I really recommend these placeholders. It's made it totally worth it right now because I don't have to do any extra work right now. Just kind of clean up these edges. By the time you get paint on these cut edges, they get a little bit stiff and then they hold the edge of that. They hold the edge of that uh, speaker away from the ceiling. And same principle goes with your can lights. You'll kind of want to just push that back off so it isn't affecting how it sits. Now I've got my wire in hand and I've got some wire strippers. Now, these wire strippers need to go down to at least 18 gauge because that is what this wire actually is. And you just gotta be careful to get this outer sheeting off. Come and get all this kind of aluminum casing off. Um, just get it stripped down to the bare minimum, which is just our black and our red wire. So with that, you just strip just a little bit, maybe, I don't know, a quarter of an inch is all you need. Like so. Like so. That's all you want, it's just that little bit showing and I think that's perfect. Here's a little trick I learned on how to hold this. I don't really wanna to touch over here as much as, I wanna to touch over here as little as possible. So I found that if I hold it in my hand, kind of like a discus and put those two fingers on there, I'm assuming this is how you play the French horn. You can hold those tabs open and stick your wires in. Stick your wires in and boom. There our electrical is connected. Really, really simple, not difficult to do. Now the next part. The next part is pushing your wire up and pushing your speaker up in place. Once you get your speaker up in place, put your drill on the lightest setting if you're using an impact drill and slowly tighten those up. And I recommend doing it like you would a car tire opposites. Kind of star pattern, even though there's only four. Do not over tighten it, because once you strip that screw, that clamp no longer works at all. So you're gonna be SOL. So definitely have some temperance there, it'll go a long way. Now we just rinse and repeat for the second speaker in this. This is the A and the next one will be the B or vice versa, but there's always two speakers for every zone. At least that's the way I built it. because when you roll out your cord, you may not need all the length of it. You can use the rest. You can bundle up the rest with these twisty ties. Well, you guys, it is late into the evening and all the speakers are in. 
all of the Juke audio system is up and running. And I am thoroughly impressed and happy with how well and fluid it functions. I've been able to spend the rest of the evening working in the house um, with music playing in the background, just blaring super clear and smooth and just conscious of wherever I was working, that's where the music was playing. And that is such a cool feature. I will leave all of the tools and the speakers and everything I used in the description down below. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.